Okay, I can't be silent anymore. Disney sucks. They ruined it. Now, we all know that Disney is a company that wants money. They really want your money, and they really spare no expense, I guess, to get that money from you. So it becomes your expense. Now, I'm a, normally a shill for Disney. I, I love Disney. I love the experience there. And domestically, not foreign, Disney Sea would be that park. The Walt Disney World Resort is my domestic preference. I like it. It's just got more space, more parks, more things to do. I love it. But... Before this trip, there used to be a way I would go about planning it. And I'm sure anybody who's watching this that has been to Disney before sort of knows that process. It's been there for years, uh, if not longer. I don't know when it first started. But the FastPass system that uh, was there for eons, it seems like an eternity now, is gone. And it's all been replaced by the bane of my existence, at least for that entire trip, Genie Plus. Now, let's first get out of the way. Their naming conventions are horrible now. You have, uh, let's see, the Disney Channel, Hulu, Disney Plus, Genie, Genie Plus, Lightning Lanes, Fast Pass, Fast Pass Plus. All of these just sort of go into your head, rattle around there. And now there's just too many of them to remember which one to use at any given moment. I found myself calling uh, Genie Plus Disney Plus. I found myself calling Genie Plus the Lightning Lanes. It was ridiculous. So... What you need to know is how it used to work, how it works now, why that sucks, and exactly who to blame for this because there is one person to blame. There might be two, but one really just screwed it up more than the other. Now, Disney planning was kind of a serious thing. It is kind of a serious thing, and it really does take some planning. You kind of have to go to a college course to get a good experience for your first time at Disney World, or even Disneyland for that matter. And what, what used to happen is you would purchase a ticket. And if you stayed on property, you got a 60-day window to book most things. So 60 days, two months before your trip, you could sit down and go, all right, I'm going to take advantage of the booked fast passes. Now, each day you went into a park and you didn't have to pick a park at that point. Uh, you could pick three experiences that you would have throughout the day. So if you went to the Magic Kingdom, you could go, okay, well, I want uh, Space Mountain, Splash Mountain, and Peter Pan's Flight. Now, you'd be somewhat limited. You couldn't combine um, some of the high-ticket rides together on the same day. You just couldn't do it. But every ride was at least available in some way for Fast Pass. Sometimes you had to give up a big-ticket experience to get one other that day. But you could still book three. So you could walk into the Magic Kingdom knowing, you know what? I'm going to ride the Dumbo ride, Space Mountain, and Big Thunder Mountain. And I'll know the times that I'm going to go to each one of them. Because when you sat down in your My Disney Experience website or app, you could say I'm going to go to Big Thunder Mountain at 10, Space Mountain at 2, Dumbo at 4. And there you, there you had it. You had a schedule all set to go. You tended to book experiences earlier in the day because once you ran out of fast passes in the park, you could book another, provided that it was still available. Now, there weren't any blackouts. There was no ride that was off the table. And that is one big problem that I will get to in a moment. Now, you have to pay for n not even anything as good as that. So you have to pay you first... If you just go to the park, you have to reserve which park you're going to, and this may end after COVID ends, but who knows, knowing Disney. Now you don't get to book anything. What you have to do is decide on the day of your park visit, I'm going to book Genie Plus. Now that costs $15 per person, so if you brought a, a per day. So if you brought a party of three, the day costs forty-five dollars. You could buy Dis or Genie Plus. See, there I go. You could buy Genie Plus the midnight of your day. So at twelve o'clock in the morning, when you should be asleep because it's Disney and you've been walking for six miles, you would get up and you would book it. Now you didn't have to. You could really book it at six fifty-nine because that's when it becomes useful. At seven o'clock, if you have a park reservation, you can get on your app. And go, hey, I'm going to use my $15 privilege and I'm going to get myself in line. Well, the first problem, not every ride is available. So if you want to ride, oh, Rise of the Resistance. Um, if you want to ride uh, Remy's Ratatouille ride, you can't do that. 
because there are certain rides, two per park, and now I think Jungle Cruise got added, so there's even three at one park. There were you just couldn't book them. So you paid $15 and now you can book anything except for two or three rides per park. Okay. We'll say that you knew which ride because some of the parks only really have one other like big ticket experience rides that you really are going to have a hard time getting into without a reservation. So let's say that you are in Pandora and there are two rides that are off the table to you. Kilimanjaro Safaris, no, sorry, Expedition Everest and Avatar Flight of Passage. We'll say that Cali River Rapids was available. Well, that's the next big sort of ride or maybe even Kilimanjaro Safaris because that does usually have a wait of about an hour to get your little safari tour. So you know that those are going to be the ones that you're going to have to wait in line an hour or two for, so you want to book that as soon as possible. Well, if you spent $15 that day to book this Genie Plus and you got on there at exactly 7 o'clock, Everybody else who's going to the park is gunning for the very same things that you are. The choice of which rides to book are actually much slimmer. So whereas a park may have, you know, 10 really wait time experiences, well, you took away two of them because you can't book them through Genie Plus. So now you're left with eight and everybody's pointing towards those rides. You might not get your first booking until two o'clock in the afternoon. And that's actually what happened to me. I was going to a park. I went for the experience that I really wanted to go that was allowed on Genie Plus. I booked it and it was two o'clock, three o'clock, one of those times. I'm like, so I just spent $15 just for me to not get anything in a reasonable amount of time. I have to wait until the afternoon when I'm hoping to park hop because you're not allowed to park hop until two o'clock. But once you are allowed, you kind of want to exercise your right, right? You bought that ticket. You want to park hop or at least have that option. Further, most of the time when I booked a ride, it conflicted with a reservation for dinner, lunch, breakfast, anything that I had booked, it would conflict. I was only able to keep two reservations. One was well after a park closed. So I went to Sanaa at 855. Animal Kingdom lot, Animal Kingdom Park closes at 8 o'clock. I had nothing else planned that day and I had plenty of time to go do something else from 10 to 11 if I really wanted to at Disney Springs or even Epcot. But that was one safe one. The other one was a lunch for my first day. And that was important because we weren't going to be leaving that park the first day. It was at Epcot, went to Nine Dragons Restaurant, it was at lunch, 2.30, and there was nothing there to book anyway on Genie Plus. Um, My wife doesn't ride Soarin', so I had nothing. So, hey, there's everything else's walk up there. So that brings me to my first, well, my first two issues. First, it's kind of a loot box. You purchase a $15 upgrade for Genie Plus, you may get a different experience than the other person who also purchased Genie Plus. Your reservation may come at 11 o'clock and Genie Plus is useful to you. Another person may get their first at 4 o'clock and Genie Plus is not useful to them. And this happens after you have already made the purchase. You don't even know if Genie Plus is worth it to you until after you bought it. Now, it doesn't come with any other perks, really. Now, maybe somebody can enlighten me on this, but there's no other reason to buy Genie Plus except for access to Fast Passes, which before came with your ticket. You didn't have to pay for them. But there's no other reason to get Genie Plus. Even the Photo Pass, which I actually thought was included in Genie Plus, Photo Pass for that day, it's not. So even if you bought this, you still have to pay more to get photos from that day. You get access to these little photo pass filters but they come with the app anyway or at least if you buy genie plus once it's included for your entire trip i don't know either way useless there's no other perk to having genie plus except for your fast passes and you don't know if that's going to be worth it until after you already make the purchase the second problem we've sort of discussed before you're limited in what you can use it on so if you have a couple rides in mind they're probably excluded and if you have a couple more rides in mind everybody else is gunning for that as well so it's really a crapshoot at 7 a.m who gets there first somebody else's day could be ruined or it might conflict with your plans see that was the benefit of having fast passes before you could sit down you could pick the times you could work around that so 
you could have a booking at 10, 2, and 4, and you just knew, hey, I've got something to do until 6 o'clock. I can book a dinner at 6 o'clock. And then when you're done with dinner, you can go back into the park. And odds are the fast pass system would work fine for you because you could genuinely pick when you wanted to go. With Genie Plus, you cannot pick when you get to go. Um, the only time that you can ever pick when you want to go is you can push your time later, but you can never pull it forward. Now, in theory, you can, but my problem was that you can never make the adjustment. It doesn't give you an option to adjust the time in the app, but it'll almost tease you. The app is very broken. It misreports time. So that two o'clock, three o'clock booking I mentioned, well, an hour into the day, I found out that that very same ride was thankfully brought back to about 11 o'clock. So I would have been able to keep a dinner. I would have been able to continue with my day as normal. And I'd actually get some use out of Genie Plus, but I couldn't make the change. I had to cancel that go back, saw the same 11 o'clock time that I was seeing before I canceled. I click book and it will push me right back to two and three o'clock. I was actually surprised it didn't punish me and push me later than that, which is entirely possible. So the misreporting times don't help either. There's no way you're going to get an earlier time. And if you do, you're extremely lucky. Not everybody's able to do this or have that kind of luck. But you will be sitting there with a two o'clock reservation and you'll constantly see the app teasing you. Oh, you want to come three hours earlier? No, you can't do that. The next problem is that there are lightning lanes. Now, lightning lanes are the new name for fast pass, but there's two different flavors of lightning lane. There is the lightning lane that you can book via the Genie Plus or there's lightning lane that you can purchase. Now, this is just a hilarious cash grab and one thing that you're going to see in the news right now is they're actually increasing prices for this. So, for example, Rise of the Resistance, at least at the time that I went, cost $15 per person to book that experience, to buy into it, to pay for it. Yeah, that's a lot of money. $45 to get three people on one ride that isn't offered any other way on Genie+. Plus. You can get in line or you can pay for it. If you get online, you wait two hours, you pay for it, you hand over $45 or however big your party size is, but through regular Genie Plus, you cannot access it. So, yeah. But the lightning lanes are also incredibly hilarious because one of the rides that's not available for Genie Plus at Animal Kingdom is Expedition Everest. Now, Disney has said that they are going to adjust the price based on the day, the crowds, the demand, the line. Well, for a 10 minute wait, and this wasn't even like close to park closing. Um, it was like a 10 minute wait to get into Expedition Everest, as it usually is from about five o'clock onward. Usually after five o'clock, everybody sort of committed themselves to going over to Pandora and riding Avatar. They usually stay away from that land because there's only one thing over there. That's Expedition Everest. Unless, I mean, if you have a family with you, you're not, you might not be riding a roller coaster if you have small children with you. So everybody's usually got that out of their system. They're done. They're moving on to something else. But starting at five o'clock, a 10 minute wait time for Kiliman, for Expedition Everest would still cost you money. You couldn't, they didn't just bump the lightning lane and go, you know what? This is stupid. We're not even going to offer it. It's a 10 minute wait. We'll put it with a paid option up when the ride gets a wait time. No, they're happy to take your money. $7 per person. So for a 10 minute wait in line for my party, it would have been $21 and Disney is happy to take that from you. So their whole line about, oh, we adjust prices. That's not true. That's actually a lie. And I actually have a screenshot if I can upload it, I will, that shows you exactly what I mean. It happened. I'm not kidding with you. Now, the, the side effect of all of this is not only does it just completely screw with your plans. If you want to plan ahead, forget it. If you have any plans to buy into Genie Plus, you're not going to be able to plan anything. You can book your day. Uh, you can book your park. You can book your meals. But the second you buy into Genie Plus, all of that might, may as well go out the window. You can't plan around it. It actually undermines your plans, which brings me to another feature of Genie, Genie Plus, that's supposed to be one of the reasons why they rolled this out, which is a lie, is that it's supposed to help your plans. Now, 
this, the regular genie, the one that you don't buy into, the one that's supposed to be a guide that'll help you get the best out of your day is completely hilariously broken. It doesn't, it won't let you know when a good time to see your ride, your favorite ride is. You can put it on your wish list, but it may never point you in that direction. It will probably point you to everything that nobody else wants to see for 90% of the day. And occasionally it'll pop up and go, hey, by the way, you might want to head over to see your ride, which has a two hour wait. Great optimization there. It doesn't work. We It seems pretty transparently a way to point people away from the high ticket rides to spread out the load. It's not helping you plan. And further proof of this is my Disney experience, the way that the old app was, it would give you a very clear indication as to what was coming up, whether it be that day, that afternoon, the next day. It was very clear. It just said, here's an overview of everything that's on your list in a row. This app doesn't do that. Sometimes you won't even be reminded. In fact, we were never reminded of a dining reservation the next day. There are so many buttons on this app that it's unreal. Uh, if you want to go ahead, download the app. You don't have to buy a ticket. You can see what I'm talking about. You can do almost anything in this app. You can place mobile food orders. You can see the wait times. You can see the attraction list. <laughs> but when you want to do something, it's not intuitive enough, intuitive enough to let you know. So, for example, if you want to see what the next day's dining is, you have to click on my plans, go to the next day, or find a separate section that says my future plans. It won't just be sitting there at the front page. So that sucks. Uh, further, if you want to book that elusive lightning lane, if you want to pay money to get into Rise of the Resistance, for example, and you're there at 7 o'clock in the morning you might be looking for a way to book the lightning lane, but you have to go to the attraction list and not the wait list. It's, that was my bad. I, you know, you spend 90% of your day looking at the wait time uh, filter. You don't think of going to the attraction list to find what you're looking for. Um, I also don't believe that the app refreshes very well. It, it is accurate with wait times, but I've stared at it. I've watched a clock roll down the wait time on a ride and I've looked at the app and for the next five minutes, nothing changes. Now, when you close the app and reopen it, it magically refreshes. But for something that's supposed to be at the, t at your fingertips, all this information, it really does a pretty piss poor job of doing the updates. It's pretty horrid. Now, this is, um, I mean, go ahead and play with the app. You'll kind of see what I mean. All the options are there, and yet it's not where you want it to be. When you're out in the parks and you're trying to be the general managing things, not only is the app trying to lie to you and sabotage you and point you in the wrong direction, but it doesn't make things easy to find in the places that you're going to be pressing when you're in the parks. It's like they never took this into a park themselves, which brings me to my next point. This is a paid beta. And they are picking up a lot of cues from EA. So you have Disney Plus, a subscription. Great. Everybody likes subscriptions, or at least uh, at least um, investors love subscriptions. You say you're going to do a subscription service, and it seems like it might work. Stock market loves you for it. Well, they have Disney Plus. Great. They have Hulu. Great. They have ESPN Plus. Great. Now it's starting to roll into the parks. So you have Genie Plus, which is an upsell that provides nothing to you and could actually ruin your day. Then they have these lightning lanes that are will happily take your money, whether we needed to or not. Disney is not really hiding the fact that they're out to get you. They want your money and they're not even hiding it anymore. Now, this brings me to a, a difference between the two CEOs and why I say that there's a very specific person who you should blame here. Bob Iger was definitely a stockholder's friend. Uh, he would slowly creep up the ticket prices. And even for his later years, everybody was pointing going, these prices are getting out of hand. Uh, there's no way that regular people are going to be able to afford these anymore. So this whole Disney is expensive thing is not new. It's been around for a while. But Bob Iger had a way of going about it. He would sneak it in there and he'd always make sure that at least if you spent the money, you felt like you actually bought something valuable. You know, it's really hard to turn to somebody and be like, hey, do you go on that trip? And they go, yeah, but it was expensive. Well, did you have a great time? 
Yeah, it's really hard to argue with that person because they did have a good experience. Bob Iger knew this. And let's be honest here, a lot of these ideas like Genie Plus and Paid Lightning Lanes were probably conceptualized while he was around. This might even be his idea to begin with. But Chapek rolled it out in the worst way possible. First, the way that you're supposed to do something like this is to actually do the beta. This is where I think Iger actually would have done this, or the way I think he would have done it. He would have rolled it out as a feature, saying this is for free. We want you to go out there and try this system, and we'll listen to your feedback. People in the parks, if they were to complain to a cast member, they'd probably get a free fast pass, whatever, but they would test it out. Things would be free until they finish the beta. Chapek, more than happy to say, unfinished, doesn't work, lies to you. This is, we'll just throw it and have you pay for it. Test it, a paid beta. This is something that EA would do. And so they got these subscriptions. They have these upcharges. They have the, you know, $15 plan that kind of sounds like the $10 plan. And they're asking you to pay for a beta. And these are all of the worst kinds of trends you want to see a company go for. At least if you're a consumer. Now, if you're a shareholder, you probably love this because this just means invented revenue stream for doing practically nothing. But for Disney fans and visitors of the park, this is horrible. They're not even trying to hide the fact they're gunning for your wallet and will lie and deceive their way into getting whatever's in it. Now, if you pair this up with some of the negative news that's going around, it doesn't paint a good look for Disney. So first, the uh, Galactic Star Cruiser, apparently... A uh, video got released. I didn't see it because I'm just not interested. I'm not going to spend $6,000 for a couple of days at a hotel. It's just not going to happen. But some people are very interested in this. If you're a Star Wars fan, I know that my dad is certainly interested in this. You have to look at it. And apparently people did look at it and shit all over it. There is nothing about that trailer that people liked. People are canceling their $6,000 reservations, even going as far to lose their deposit in doing so. And I was reading this while I was in the park. So I'm looking up just regular news sites and it knows that I've been searching up Disney and it's throwing all of these news reports and I'm just shocked. I didn't look up, hey, why does Disney suck? Why, uh, why are they greedy? No, this was just regular news that was showing up. They're getting sued for a Magic Key um, plan, which is the new annual plan, by the way, um, for California. And for Disney World, but in California, they're getting sued because people who bought into this Magic Key annual pass are getting blocked from doing anything in the parks. Apparently, even though the parks are at are not at capacity, like there could be, I'm just going to call a number out here. I don't know what the park capacity is, but say that they had a park capacity of 50,000 people and they will reserve uh, 5,000 of that for MISC tickets, which is annual holders, local ticket holders, you know, California residents, um, extended pass people, and they'll have 45,000 left for regular use. Well, the park may have only received 30,000 visitors that day, leaving 15,000 free spots open, but the Magic Key people can't get in. So they feel like they're being lied to there. That's a problem because they're getting sued. Disney overbooks Lightning Lane for the Magic Kingdom Christmas parades, and they cancel guest reservations with no communication. So their Lightning Lane system is not working, and they're just screwing with people's plans because they made a mistake. That's something that Disney never used to do. And they've more than doubled the prices on some Lightning Lanes. So I'm reading a report here that says that uh, Radiator Spring Racers went from $7 to $18 per ride in one week because of the winter holiday. Now, they did say that they would adjust prices as um, as crowds increase or decrease, but it was almost thought to be a little bit more... <sighs> okay, it's just a bad time for it, especially when they can't do the reverse and not charge anything but maybe a dollar for a lightning lane with a 10-minute wait. That seems pretty ridiculous and kind of ballsy. The thing is, I would love to make it seem like this is just me complaining. Me, old man yelling at Sky. No, it's not me. I actually asked everybody I could ask while I was there, like, hey, does this suck to you too? And these were 
older fans. These are ones that have had their DVC membership for decades. These are people who clearly were there in like the 80s or even the 70s in some cases. These were older fans, and I get it. An older crowd is not going to be as tech savvy as a younger crowd in general. But it wasn't that. It was the desire to get more money, to leech more money, and the the relative unintuitiveness of the app. The older fans were not having it. I didn't run into anyone who was happy. There was a, one article you can uh, search for it, but one Disney fan actually let Genie, the free version of it, go ahead and guide their day. And, oh man, it ended with some hilarious results. This stuff doesn't work. Um... And I'm reading articles like why everybody is done with Disney World, and I don't blame them. At this point, I see the writing on the wall. I don't know if shareholders are going to win on this. What I see is when the parks officially come back into full use, you're going to see their stock price probably get over 200 Because when it was 100 before Gene, or Disney+, Plus, when it was you know 100, almost 200 um after genie plus and we're still in the pandemic you've got to imagine that you know that extra boost that genie or disney plus damn i really cannot get over this naming convention when their online streaming service revenue finally matches up with a full-time post-pandemic crowd that's going to just super inflate their stock it's going to be all good news sunshines and rainbows and all these extra profits they're skimming off of people are certainly going to look good but I think that once that happens, once it sort of levels out, the backlash is going to be far too great. When the pandemic ends and people really want to go to Disney World, when they don't have to worry about travel, when this when this turns into an endemic rather than a pandemic, this is going to blow up in Disney's face, I truly believe. Because I actually wrote a letter to Bob Chapek about a year ago, and I said, you know what? This is just my two cents. I'm a Disney investor. I'm a longtime visitor. I know you're not going to read this. It's going to be your assistant. So if I get anything back, I'll be amazed. But I basically pointed out, you are integral to America being Disney. And I highly recommend that you take a moment to consider that everybody wants Disney in their life. Or most families want Disney in their life when the pandemic is over. And you're going to be the first place that a lot of people think of to take their family. Don't take advantage of that. In fact, welcome people in. You can still make boatloads of money by inviting people in, maybe just not raising prices, maybe just saying, hey, everybody, really Disney wants to take care of you. Let's do a couple of ticket drops or some hotel drops, and we'll just make sure that you feel like you're welcome here. People would get behind the Disney brand and spend that money elsewhere on Disney if it looked like they were with the times, but now... They're really making it very well known that they are not interested in that. They are not going to raise their minimum wage unless forced to. They're not going to get rid of these upcharges unless forced to. They don't care about the backlash because people have complained about this system all over the place. Online, blogs, on Twitter, highly visible articles. And they haven't done anything. In fact, the response to Scarlett Johansson was kind of hilarious in, in any legal battle, they're willing to just attack people for no reason. They don't care if they look like the bad guys. They will take your money. They will lie to you. They will cheat. They will steal. They will point the blame at everybody else. And that's not the way Disney used to be even as soon as two years ago under Iger's leadership. So, yes, Iger certainly wanted your money. But, man, JPEG just makes it look horrible. I'm not convinced that he's actually been in the parks in the last two years. I'm not convinced that he's been in the parks for the last five years. I I really can't imagine why the former head of Disney Parks is allowing himself to look this way. And that's another article I saw. Apparently, there are two articles that got me. Apparently, people want Chapek's head. They want him out. Shareholders want him out. And it's pretty widespread now that the anti-Chapek uh, movement is growing. And people have said, we want Iger to come back. Well, wait a minute. Think about that because none of the problems are going to be solved monetarily if Iger comes back as far as your wallet as a consumer. But he would certainly be a far better leader. He's already proven himself to be than Chapek. But 
Chapek is out of touch, and the other article I read is that he's data-driven. He's a micromanager. He sees a piece of data and goes, why is that low? Let's do something about it. Well, maybe you might piss off the fans, sir. I don't care. Raise that number. That's what he's like, according to anecdotal evidence and according to the fact that he actually sat down and went, I don't like people calling me that. Well, how else are you going to admit that you were like that if not that way? Really, Chapek? Come on. So if there's anybody's head you should be going for in all of this, it's Chapex. Chapek is, I, I don't know how he managed to lead this. I, with no experience whatsoever in running Disney, could lead this better than him. I'm, and when I can honestly say that without even going, you know, people are going to think I'm ridiculous. When I can honestly say I can do a better job than that guy, you probably need to go. Find someone else. Bring Iger back. I don't really care. I don't want you to. It'll just be all shareholder talk, but... Go for it. Just get Chapek out of there. He doesn't know what he's doing. And I say that with all levity and humiliation. Really, he doesn't. Now, I could certainly give you details as to how my trip went and how Genie Plus managed to ruin everything. But I think I've said enough here. I've ranted for about a half an hour. Uh, this was just sort of a, I need to get this down on... I need to get this logged down somewhere. So there was no structure to this, no script. It was just me screaming into the void. Uh, if I have something more constructive to provide later on, I will. But for now, if you're a Disney fan and you're thinking of going to Disney World, I would think twice. Wait for a couple years. Wait until they actually finish their new coasters and new attractions. And wait until all this shakes out. But it, Because as of right now, you're just the guinea pig to them. They want to test out price gouges on you. Don't subject yourself to it. Find somewhere else to go. I, I don't know. I actually thought about looking at Universal. It's been a while since I've been. That's probably where I'll look next. Or maybe I'll just go on a nice vacation somewhere for and actually see France instead of the France Pavilion. Either way, Disney's not where I'm looking. If you have to go to Disney, I recommend Tokyo Disney Sea and Tokyo Disneyland. But let me know if you agree with me. If you don't agree with me, I don't care. Put it in the comments. Maybe I'll follow this up. I have a lot of thoughts on Disney. This is my first Disney-related video here. So it is what it is. See you guys later. Good luck.